morning, Jamie. Hey, have you heard from Jared? How's he doing? His new companion's kind of weird, but they got a couple of baptisms. Well, good for him. How's little Mac? Hey, Bishop. How's the bun? The bun's fine, thank you. It's the oven we're worried about. The oven is fine, too. Wes, Sister Perkins is inside. I don't know what she wants. She won't talk to me. All right. Your check's the receipt. Thanks, Peg. Morning, Bishop. Hey, morning, Barbara. Well, look who finally decided to drag his butt out of bed. Don't know why everybody calls you Bishop. Well, maybe that's because he's the bishop. He's a bishop. There are 17 bishops in this town, but there's only one sheriff. Is there anything important in here? Is there ever? Besides, bishops aren't supposed to have mustaches. I'm just trying to be more like Jesus. They're also not supposed to be smart, Alex. Judy Perkins. What am I, invisible here? I already told you. You've been dead for six weeks. You just don't know it yet. Good morning, Stu. Good morning, Sheriff. I'll be dead someday, you know. And I'm sure you'll still be hanging around my office. You're gonna miss me when I'm gone. Don't you start singing that country music. You're gonna miss me when I'm gone. You're gonna miss me. You're gonna wanna kiss me. Um, I need to talk to you about a problem I'm having. Okay, is this, uh, is this temporal or spiritual? Pardon? Are you here to talk with your sheriff or your bishop? Oh, my bishop. Well, in that case, could this wait until Sunday? I generally don't like to do church business while I'm on the county clock. I'm sorry. Normally I wouldn't, but I really need to get this off my chest. Would you mind? I've never had to confess my sins to a man wearing a gun before. Oh. Sorry. Thanks, Judy. Just got a call from the development. A couple of boys are mixing it up. I'll go. No, no, you won't. You're not an officer anymore. Yeah, well, I could be if you deputized me. I'm not gonna do it. So what am I supposed to do? Just take out the trash and sweep the floor? Just be retired for crying out loud. Why don't you go home and do some crossword puzzles? Maybe you should take up golf. I hear old people really enjoy that. <laughs> maybe you should all go straight to hell. I got 15, maybe 20 good years left. Well, I'll live all of you birds anyway. Now that may be, but you're still not going out. Can I ride you? Can out shoot you. We don't ride anymore, Stu. We drive. Wes, your gun. Oh. Well, that's all right. I'll just stay here with old Peg, then. Old Peg? We're gonna need one of you. Why don't you just take him with you? Peg's practically married, Stu, and don't you forget it. That's right. Maggie's looking down on you. Maggie's probably got better things to do than look down on me. Oh, good heavens. Terry, I don't want to listen to the news. That's the real world going on out there, Wes. The outside world. You should think I don't know what's going on out there. I'm sick of it. Murderers, rapists, robbers, kids with guns. It's the same story over and over again. I'm tired of it. 
You will be too by the time you're my age. Your age. Talk like you're older than Stu. You just can't pretend it all doesn't happen, Wes. That's all I'm saying. Well, it doesn't happen. Not here. Here's all I care about. There. There's something worth listening to. Country music. Now that's a crime. That's scary stuff, Wes. You're an old man, you know that? You're the youngest old man I've ever known. You got a call about a fist fight. Oh, yeah. Well, that didn't amount to much. Just a couple of guys blowing off some speed. Which ones? Come on, Wes. A few punches being thrown, a few names being called. I stepped in and it was over before it even got started. What were they fighting about? A woman. And one guy called another guy a spick. Before you know it, the fists are flying. It's all patched up then? Yeah, no trouble at all. Just like I said. It was over before it even got started. Just look at this! I can see a church right there. Two more off that way. And another one going up over there. I've never seen so many churches in all my life, man. <laughs> Is that one of them? Yeah, that's one of them. I love this town. Hey, where I come from, we got taverns in every corner and whorehouses in between, man. I'm glad you like it. And I'll get to work. All right, I think I will. If you ever finish that house, I just may let you buy it. Hey, I might do that. I just might. Sure is an extrovert type. Come on. You don't want to go around arresting a potential citizen. You don't want to discourage growth now, do we, Sheriff? I wouldn't mind slowing it down a bit. You're trying to put me out of business? I'm just trying to keep things reined in. All the construction on the roads, all your out-of-towners coming in for work, everything's torn up from here to Salt Lake. Tell me, Bishop, how many men in your ward are out of work? Only the ones that want to be. That's right. Prosperity. And it ain't gonna be this way forever. Ten years ago, I was living in a trailer park. Let's enjoy this while we got it. Growing pains, that's all. That's right. Can't stay young forever. How much money do you think Ralph makes? What, in a year? Uh, I don't know, a couple hundred thousand, I guess. And we're cops. What are we doing being cops? I got everything I need. Nah, uh, real estate keeps going up. I don't know if I'll ever be able to buy anything. Terry, I'm paying you as much as I can. I know that, Wes. Just Sometimes I just think I ought to go back to work for Ralph again, you know? Learn how he does it. Gotta start putting money away for my kids, their missions, college. Sure do miss her. She was the only one who'd listen to my missionary stories. You want a minute? Yeah. Okay. Thanks. What's up? Looks like some car. I just want to check this out.
Drop that glove box, see if you can find my ticket book. Sheriff's office. I need you to do something for me. Shoot. Get Ryan Parker on the phone and have him meet me out at the old Evans homestead. All right. Tell him to come right away. We got a signal seven. Okay. Will do. Give me the uh, give me the number for the FBI office up in Salt Lake. Roger. Thanks. What's signal seven? What the heck is a signal seven? That's a dead body. I need you to go into town and get Ed Gray. We're gonna need his tow truck. Look at what they did to her. They didn't have to leave her like that. Are you Wes Clayton? Uh, Sheriff Clayton, yeah. Are you the one that found the body? Yes, yes, I did. Have you identified the victim yet? No, it's an out-of-state car. She's not from town. That's why I called you in on it. Okay, great, thanks. Don't go away. Sheriff? Hey, Chief. I never expected to make a business trip to Brigham. Oh, I know it. We can't just let these guys in here. We gotta finish our investigation. We don't have an investigation. Sheriff, is that all right with the truck? That's great, thanks. That lady died in our town, Wes. We gotta take care of this. We don't have to take care of anything. This doesn't have anything to do with our town. Sheriff, what's going on? There's been a killing. It's nobody we know. It's it's California plates. Wes. Terry, that's an out-of-state vehicle. We were just another exit ramp. It could have happened anywhere. Wes, this is right in our own backyard. But people don't even lock their doors in our town. And I don't want them to start. Now, this doesn't have anything to do with anybody in our town except you and me, and that's where I want it to stop. Do you understand me? Do you understand me? Yeah. Ed, do you understand? Yeah. 
All right, now, Terry, you're not even going to talk to your wife about this. Now, if anybody asks us anything, we're going to keep our mouths shut. Peg knows, right? She knows. I didn't sign up just to walk kids across the street, Wes. You I signed up something. to serve these people and to protect these people. And this kind of thing, they don't want to know anything about it. Hey, Sheriff, has there ever been a murder in this town? Never. We'll do the autopsy in Provo. She'll be there a few more days if you want to have another look at her. Great, thanks, Ryan. We're not stepping on any toes here, are we, Wes? Apparently, I'm taking orders from those two today. No, it's it's all right. It's fine. Here, just take her. Get her out of here. All right, then. Hey, Ryan. Listen, I'd appreciate it if the reporters didn't get a hold of this. I'm not going to make any public announcements. Good. If anybody calls... If anybody calls, I'll just refer them to you. Thanks. Don't let those feds bully you around, Wes. If I were you, I'd keep my nose in this one. I think we have everything we need here. Do you guys mind waiting for the tow truck to finish up? I'll stay. Please give us a call if there's anything else we need to know. Don't be surprised if you see us around town over the next few days. Listen, uh, I'd rather you left that part to me. Don't worry, Sheriff. We'll keep a low profile. All right. Bring you some food, hot chocolate or something. I'm just gonna wait for Ed. He can be right home in the tow truck. All right. You know, something finally happens around here. You just pretend it never did. I'll be over as soon as that car leaves town. great honor we have gathered here today to celebrate one more year and to wish our beautiful little city happy birthday on this the 138th anniversary of its founding we love you little Brigham Careful, guys, please just watch where you're going. Okay, go, 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 go. Oh, guys, come. Oh. Kilo two, this is dispatch. Could you, could you guys just make sure Harry, you look where you're going? There. Harry. It's kilo two, go ahead. We're getting calls about an overflowing irrigation ditch on 600 North. Well, what do you want me to do about it? I'm a little busy right now. I told them we'd get somebody over there. Why can't they do it themselves? Because they're helpless. Well, I can't do it. Where's Stu? Hey, 
bus. Hey. Keeping this ride under control? Well, we're trying. Hey, have there been any developments on that, um... I think you're coming to my baptism, aren't you? I wouldn't miss it. You know that? <laughs> Excuse me. Steve, I need you to do me a favor. Sure, ship anything you need. You're still developing your own film. Mm -hmm. I need you to develop these for me. <laughs> you ought to take that to one of those quickie stops. They can open that right up. No, I can't take it anywhere. I need you to develop these, and then I need you to bring the prints back to me, directly to me. And you're not to talk about what you see in here. All right. Excuse me. Think you two could be any more conspicuous? Sure. Sticking out like a couple of sore thumbs. Oh, that that's much better. Thanks. We've already gotten a call on that, but we're pretty busy with the parade and all. I understand that. Yes, definitely. I'm sure you will. Okay, all right. Let's go get some cotton candy. Excuse me. Goodbye to you, too. You're missing all the fun. You won't answer the phone? No. I didn't think so. Sheriff's office, this is Peg? Yes. Yes, ma'am, we've already gotten a call on that. It was the head trauma that killed her. I'm sure you picked up on that. Yeah, it was kind of hard to miss. We pulled debris samples from underneath her fingernails. Maybe she scratched him. We pulled debris and fibers from her clothes, from the car. We got hair, blood samples. Hopefully the mess wasn't all hers. Was she raped? No. And it doesn't look like a robbery. We are checking the interstate record to find anything that looks familiar to anybody. But so far, no luck. But it is the weekend. Listen, uh, I've got a deputy who's eager to help out on this one. I could lend him to you. I don't know if it would help speed things up. No. Thanks. Relax, Sheriff. This woman's only been dead for a day and a half. It's not like her blood's crying out for vengeance just yet. Are you Mormon? Sure. Jack Mormon. So I'm taking a little sabbatical. Protected serve my eye. Crap. Why don't you help me solve some of this crap? You say something to me, this hearing aid's giving me a piece of hell tonight. Hey, you want to watch where you're flinging that stuff?
Heavenly Father, we thank thee for this beautiful Sabbath morning. And we ask for thy spirit to be with the speakers today, that they'll be able to communicate thy word and thy will to us. And we ask that thou wilt continue to watch over us and to bless us and to care for us. In the name of the Savior, Jesus Christ, amen. amen. We have some word business to take care of at this time. I'm sad to report that the, uh, the Markham family will be moving three blocks east. <laughs> so they'll still be in our ward. And they would appreciate it if as many of us as can would help them move into their new place Friday. So let's all try to get out and help them. Also, Sister Judy Perkins, will you please stand? At this time, we'd like to release Sister Perkins from her calling as a teacher in the Relief Society. All of those who, along with me, would like to express their gratitude for the many hours of service, please make it manifest with the uplifted hand. Thanks, Judy. And now we will prepare to partake of the sacrament by singing hymn number 193, I Stand All Amazed, following which the sacrament will be blessed and passed by the Aaronic Priesthood. That they may witness unto thee, O God, the Eternal Father, that they do always remember him, that they may have his spirit to be with them. Amen. Steve, Bishop. Okay, there you go. Thanks. <laughs> I'd say you're welcome, but it's really something I'd rather not do again. I'm sorry you had to see this. I don't suppose you can say anything about that? You kept my secrets. I'll keep yours. You're a good man. Don't let it get out. Ruin my reputation. Christ says we should be, and I love how he puts this, as wise as serpents, yet as harmless as doves. What do you think he means by that? Let's go to another scripture. Ah, Brother Hanks. I think he was saying that, well, it's like if you have to go to a used car lot. You've got to know all the different ways that the guy can rip you off. No offense, John. I mean, you can't be gullible. You have to know all the different ways you can get hurt. But how does that fit in with something else that Jesus said? We're supposed to be like little children, right? Christ says, unless... We're like little children. We will not enter the kingdom of God. And children are totally innocent. 
They're gullible. Do we have to lose our innocence to gain wisdom? Christ was wise, but he was sinless. True, but what about Adam and Eve? They were sinless, well, for a while. <laughs> but were they wise? Let's go to another scripture, Book of Mormon, 2 Nephi, chapter 2, verses 22 to 25. Do I have a volunteer? I'm sorry, sister, I, I, I don't know your name. Meredith Cole. Sister Cole, would you like to read that for us? I'm sorry, I'm not a Mormon. I'm just observing. Oh. Oh, good. Welcome. Thank you. You can read, can't you? Yes, I can. Would you mind reading that for us? Sure. If Adam had not transgressed, he would not have fallen. What are you after? Go on, get out of here. Get, get out of here. Get out of here. Get In there? I think he's at a meeting. Sheriff! Bishop, what brings you our way? Hi, Evelyn. You mind if I come in? <laughs> mind? Why, well, we've been inviting you over for the past six months. Come on in. Thanks. Can I talk you into staying for dinner? No, no, I can't. Oh, Ernie. Come on in. Carol will be home any minute. She was off and gone before we even got up this morning. Oh, hey there, Bishop. Oh, hey, Ernie. Staying for dinner? No, I can't. Sit down. Sit down. So what's on your mind? What can we do for you, Wes? It's about Carolyn. Um, excuse me. No, Ernie, no. I'll just be a minute. Hello? Can I get you something yeah, to drink? Oh, hey, Linda. Yeah, no, the sheriff, he's right here. Wes is here right now. Bishop, can I get you a cold drink or something? Uh-huh. Uh, are you sure? Are you sure it's her? No. No. Thank you. Thank you.
This is Sherry Cornell reporting to you live from Brigham, Utah, a once sleepy town put on the map tonight as the scene of a grisly murder. Carolyn Mel. Congratulations, Sheriff. We've got a serial killer in town. Stuart Udall, do you swear to uphold the Constitution of the state of Utah, the laws of Kirtland County and the cities therein? Yes, sir, I do. Then I hereby deputize you. You now serve at the pleasure of the sheriff. Excuse me. Is uh, Wes Clayton here? No. Peg, if you don't tell Wes I'm out here, I'm gonna walk right into his office right now. I wouldn't recommend it. Peg. Wesley, I need to see you for well, five I, minutes. I know that. You're gonna have to give me a couple minutes here. Peg, I need a couple thousand of these. Shrink them down and put two on a page. All right. Sheriff, can we have a word? No. And then I need you to get a hold of all the ironic priesthood boys in town. All of them. I want a copy of that on every doorstep before it gets dark. Got it. Terry. Yeah. Wesley. Mayor, you're just gonna have to hold on for a few minutes. Are you the mayor? Yes, I am. Who are you? My name's Jack. Do you mind if I ask you a few questions? Oh, I guess that'd be fine. That'd be all right. <clears throat> I'll be fine. Okay, Stu, I need you and Terry to knock on every door within two blocks of the square. Now, let's not just talk to whoever answers the door. Let's talk to everybody who lives there. Anybody that was visiting yesterday, anybody that could have seen anything. Got it. Let's get it done. Yes, sir. Sheriff. You got a minute? No, I don't. I need your permission to look at the files for anything that might help the investigation. Look, you can look at anything you want to. Just don't remove anything and let me know what you're making copies of. Deal. You're not going to find anything. Everybody here dies of natural causes. What about Tamara Hillam? Tammy Hillam? I've heard her name about three times today. Well, one thing, she isn't dead. She took off during her senior year of high school. That was a couple years ago. Big fight with her parents. She went off to Hollywood to be a movie star, and that's the last anybody heard of her. No postcards, no emails, nothing, not even to her friends? Sheriff, no postcards or anything? Look, it, it's in her file. Just tell Peg to give you access. Thank you. That's true. Uh, I took her to the junior prom last year. We were, you know, we were very close. Everybody says she was murdered. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. Was she, um... Was she violated? Do you have any men working for you that might be capable of something like that? No, I don't. Most of your men are outsiders. They're migratory. Yes, they are. And maybe you don't know some of them as well as you think you do. I know enough that I don't have any of that kind working for me. How do you know that? Well, the way I figure it is, a guy who does something like this kind of has to work himself up to it. Has a record of some kind rape or or assault or some kind of violence. Hey, you remember that kid uh, that kid who broke in my office several years ago? 
Yeah, yeah, we got him. Yeah, we did. And I also found out that that kid had a history of that kind of thing. It's my own fault. I never did any kind of background check. I, I took his application and I took his word. I deserve to get robbed. And from then on, anybody who works in my crew, I know who they are and where they come from. And I don't hire no man with a shady history. Now, that may not be very Christ-like, but that's the way I run my business. And that's how I know. No one really knows what happened. It's just one of those things. Freak accident, you know? Wes can't remember any of it. The best anyone can figure, a truck or somebody, took a wide turn. He swerved and went off the road. It was up in the canyon, you know, so if you go off the road, you're in trouble. Nobody stopped. Nobody reported it. Half the town was out looking for him. He was supposed to perform a wedding that night. Terry was the one that finally found them. Horrendous is this. What was the last thing your daughter said to you? <sighs> she must have said something. Richie died instantly. Sarah, too, probably. Her neck was broken. And Wes. Wes was in a coma for eight days. He told me once that that was the worst part of it, that he couldn't remember. He doesn't know if it was his fault or not. He still wears his wedding ring. Oh, they were a beautiful family. <laughs> and that boy, that boy, that boy followed him around like a shadow. The weird thing was that they held the funeral without him. Nobody thought he was going to make it. He woke up and they were already in the ground. That's where they found her, right under there. Yeah, I know where they found her. Ivan Jensen, he was the one who found her. Well, I was he asking told you me that himself, yeah. Yes, I sir. just wanted to know if you saw he anything different or himself. suspicious. Sheriff, Mr. McKay, so what can I do for you? Beer? I need to ask you to do me a favor. I didn't think we had that kind of relationship. It's got something to do with those murders in town? I think it would be good for the, uh, for the long-term health of your little establishment here if you'd help me out on this one. What's the magic word, Sheriff? Probation. I want to be 20. Why do you want to be 20? Because then I can drive. 
You can drive when you're 16, sweetie. I know. You can also date when you're 16. <laughs> Do you want this over here? Fingers out of the food, please. Sweetie. You want to pray? Just a second, sweetie. Good night, Brother Jensen. Good night, boys. Heck of a day to move. Thanks for coming by. My pleasure. Oh, you didn't have to bring all this. We've got enough to worry about. Besides, if we left it to the men, we'd be eating cold pizza and donuts. <laughs> That's about right. <laughs> Thank you. Of course. Any <laughs> time. <laughs> Sometimes I look at them and I can't believe they all came out of my body. Don't even talk like that. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I, I keep forgetting. I'm sorry. I pretend I have easy deliveries. Hi. Hey what are you doing here? Hey, hey, Terry. Just had to see how my baby's doing. Oh, my God. Hey. Coming back for seconds, say, eh, Bishop? <laughs> yeah, you caught me. <laughs> I'm just teasing you. Were you tickled you here? Hey, did um, Terry tell you we finally chose a name for the baby? No, no, he didn't say anything. Yeah, it was his choice this time. I tried to talk him out of it, but I suppose we're going to be calling the baby Wes. Well, that's a good name. Yeah, I thought you'd like it.
go for it. You're not big on hunting, are you, Wes? Nope. Might improve your marksmanship. No offense. Went on a deer hunt once with my brother Alan, a couple of his friends. They were big hunters. I've already told you this story. No, you haven't. Anyway, we uh, went out all day, didn't get anything. I must have been, oh, 12, 13 maybe. Didn't even see a deer. Started shooting at anything that moved and scared up this little jackrabbit and he, uh, he took off and I raised my rifle. I fired and, and he went down. We all ran over there and uh, he, was, he was still alive. You know, he was still kicking. Alan said, better put him out of his misery. So I put the end of my rifle up up to his head and I pulled the trigger. You know, I had this strange feeling. I mean, I, I mean, I liked it, you know? There was some part of me that really liked killing that animal. It's like some part of me coming up that I, I didn't like, so I, I went home and I put the gun away and I never went hunting again. You know, I hadn't thought about it, but uh, I haven't fired a weapon at any living creature since then. Did you take it home? The rabbit? Did you eat it? No. Nah. No, nah, we left it there. In the dirt. You know, I think some men just have a taste for killing. I think they like it. The guy we're looking for. You think, um, you think this guy could ever be cured? You think he could, I don't know, repent? I don't know. I have a hard time imagining it. Well, I know one cure. Edward Conrad Gray, having been commissioned of Jesus Christ, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Set up. Are you ready to go? Yeah, I'll be there in a minute. It's not your fault, you know. You're a good sheriff, Wes. Better than I ever was. Well, that's not true, and you know it. It is true, and you know it. That's a compliment. Thank you. You're welcome. Little places like this, our days are numbered, you know. The rest of the world won't let us be. They're going to drag us in, whether we like it or not. See, what we got here is a little paradise. 
And nothing attracts a serpent like a paradise. You can look. How do I look? What? Oh, never mind. Peg, you don't have to do this. Are you kidding? This is great. I get to go undercover. Got your pencil? Mm -hmm. Well, there was nowhere else to put it. Ow. Was order these empty beer bottles? Yeah, right there, right, right over here. Now, these ones are from table seven, and their names are Glenn, Dave, Danny. Well, now we're gonna keep all this straight. We don't have to. All we gotta do is run the prints. If there's a match, we get a name and a photo. And a rap sheet. That's right. Who thought up this scheme? I wish I could say it was me. Wes. <laughs> Son of a gun. Sheriff, what are you doing here? I'm just keeping my eye on the party. You still my bishop, or did they release you? I'm still your bishop. Well, I'm gonna keep an eye on you tonight. Likewise. Hey, hey. What can I do for you boys? What's your name? Same as it was five minutes ago. It's Peg, you idiot. Well, Peg, how come it is that uh, you don't have a little name tag like all the other girls here? Because I'm new. She's the new girl. That's right. Well, you know, that's uh, that's kind of a coincidence because uh, I just happen to be looking for a new girl. Are you now? OK, well, what can I get for you? Uh, just give us another round, please. OK. Got some food. You got any food? Mm-hmm. Got food? All right. Uh, yeah, whatever. OK. Some chicken wings. Anybody missing? Well, just about everybody will roll in sometime for last call. Even the non-drinkers will come in, shoot some pool, chase some skirt. I haven't been asked out on so many dates in all my life. back of your car. How much are these guys gonna drink anyway? Things are slowing down in there. Thank heavens. Terry, I need you to take Peg back to the office. Peg, go ahead and uh, start dusting these bottles. Roger that. Stu, I need you to stick around for another hour or so, then take this load back to the office. Can you stay awake that long? Sure, I can stay awake. All right. Good work, man. And woman. I think we're gonna get this guy.
worried. Right there, huh? Sorry. You need a hand? I think they gave me the wrong tool. Yeah. That happens. I got something in the truck. Thanks. Give this a try. You. James? You're up late. Well, you know what they say, no rest for the wicked. Is this all for you? Uh, give me a pack. What was that? Pack of cigarettes, Jamie. Straights, no filters. One pack. You want me to get you a Playboy, too? No, I don't want a Playboy. I just want a pack of cigarettes. Okay? Well, I'm not gonna give them to you. Well, you got them there for sale. I'm the customer. You're either gonna sell them to me or I'm gonna take my business elsewhere and you suit yourself. Doggone things are gonna kill you. I think I'm gonna tell the bishop on you. You mind your own business. I'll get around to telling the bishop sooner enough. I always do. Thank you very much. You're not very welcome. This won't make it easy for me, will you? Jamie! James!
Sheriff. I'm sorry. Anyway, make sure you get plenty. Steve, let's give him a minute. Bottles are still in the back of the truck. I guess they didn't notice he had them. Get them back to the office as fast as you can. You don't have any time to waste. Have you had enough of the real world yet, Terry? Hey, Spence. You gonna find my sister? I'm gonna find her. You say a few prayers in the meantime, though, okay? Okay. Okay. So how many sets of prints are we gonna have? 437 bottles, 437 prints. Some will be duplicates. Triplicates. We're gonna be here all night. He's dead. Yeah, let him in. If we find anything, it's not admissible in court, is it? We're just trying to identify some suspects. I just want to find Jamie. Do you think she's still alive? Hey. Hey, Ed. Heard about Stu. Uh, Ed, this is Meredith Cole. She's with the FBI. Oh, hi. Nice to meet you. Is there anything I can do to help? Why don't you grab some gloves? Help peg dust for prints. Really? Dust for prints? Wow. It's not all that exciting, believe me. Okay. We'll find her. First one's coming up. Well, what do you know? That every man in that bar had a record of some kind. We'll only flag the violent ones. Sex offenders. Peg, why don't you get on the phone? See how many men you can get to meet me at the gazebo at 7 a.m. It's 2.30 in the morning. Doesn't leave us much time. Okay. There's gonna be a lot of people hating me tonight. Just tell them Jamie Harlan's life's on the line. You won't hear much grumbling. You got yourself a nice town. Yeah. Yeah, they're good people. Where are you from? Are you a Salt Lake girl? No. No, I'm just passing through. Doing some training. The Jack Mormon. <laughs> How's that going? Oh, I'll whip him into shape. Actually, I grew up in Manhattan. Have you ever been there? It's nice. Different, I hear. <laughs> oh, yeah. Out here with all the empty space, it's kind of creepy. 
creepy. Really. Sure. You seem like a pretty reasonable man. Intelligent. Down to earth. Okay. I've been reading some of your books. Your scriptures. All this about angels and prophets, Jesus talking to people. Do you really believe all that? Yes, I do. You're just a little naive, that's all. Excuse me? You know, I've heard it all my life. Because we don't want to experience some of the things out there. Some people think we're naive. We have our own experiences. You know, we get down on our knees and we say our prayers and we, we do our best to live the way that God wants us to live. And every now and again, he gives us a, a little experience. I guess we're both naive to one extent or another. Just about different things. Meredith, can you take over at the computer? Don't give up. Ed. Mm -hmm. How many of you men serve full-time missions for the church? And what I'm going to ask you to do is going to feel just like the old days. I want you to pair off two by two. You're gonna go from house to house. You're gonna knock on every door. You're gonna search every home in town. Now, I want you to be nice about this. These people are your neighbors, but I want you to be thorough. Mike? I have to be to work by nine. Nobody's going to work today. Jamie Harlan's life is more important than any of your jobs. You're gonna look in every closet. You're gonna look in every corner, in every attic, in every space that's large enough to hold a human body. If anybody doesn't let you search the house, one of you is gonna sit right down on the front curb and the other one's gonna come back here immediately. Except in that circumstance, you will not separate. If anybody decides to take a 15 minute break, I wanna know about it. I don't want anybody to have time to hide or move anything. Do you understand? Ivan. Does this mean we're all suspects? Yes, it does. Morning, Megan. Hi. Hi. The sheriff's asked us to go house to house in the town. We're looking for Jamie Harlan. Sister Peck, uh, Mike, Mike and I have been asked by the sheriff to come search some of the homes here in town. We're just um, hoping you won't mind if we come inside and have a look around. You want to what? 
You probably heard that Jamie Harlan's missing. We're searching all the homes in town. You're not coming into my house. You don't have a warrant. You're not even policemen. No, ma'am, we're not. We're just out here trying to do the right thing. You're not coming into my house. Uh, well, is Steve home? Because cause maybe we can talk to him. No, he's not. <laughs> he's right. This is like being a missionary. <sighs> <laughs> I guess I'll wait here at the curb if you want to run into town. No, I'm not running anywhere. Uh, here we go. Just want to let you in? No, not an inch. Clara, this is Sheriff Clayton. I want you to open up this door. Clara, there's a young girl's life at stake. Now, you either open up this door or I'm going to break it down. Clara! You guys stay right here. Kilo one to kilo two. What's going on? Your mother won't let us search the house. We don't have a warrant. Do you really want me to get one? This isn't right. This just isn't right. Check under the bed. Steve, I want you to let me in this closet. Bishop, open this door. No. What are you doing? Clara, stay back. Get your hands on back. Okay, Steve, this is getting out of hand. I want you to unlock this door before somebody gets hurt. Steve! He's in the cup there.
You have a you have a dark room in the garage. Yeah. We're gonna need to see it. I did. I think I would die if anyone knew. Steve, I need you to come back with me to the station for questioning. Bishop, don't. Don't call me Bishop. Right now, I have to care about the people in this town a lot more than I care about you. Do you understand me? I never hurt anybody. Not anybody. people back to their houses. It's all right, you guys. There's nothing going on here. This is the Peck's house. Let's go. There's nothing wrong here. Come on, let's go. There's nothing wrong here. Like there was this fingerprint thing anyway. Just shut up. on Lisa Colvin and Tammy Hill. Meredith had him out. I'll find him. All right. Here comes the last one. Wes! This better be him. Come on. It's the last one. Construction guy. Yeah, big guy. I remember him. Come on, come on, give me the rap sheet. Possession of marijuana. That's it? Gotta be kidding. You get anything? You can listen, I don't think so. Now what? Now you go home and get some rest. Wes. Neither one of you slept in 48 hours. I'm gonna need you fresh again tomorrow. So how long has it been for you? I'll be fine. It's all right. We've done everything we can do for now. Would, would it be okay if we said a prayer? Sure. Heavenly Father, Right now, we're kind of at the end of our rope. We're losing some of our friends, some of our family. Everything's falling apart. Nobody trusts anybody. Everybody's afraid. 
And we're just so tired. Please, help us find Jamie. Please don't let her die. Help us find this man who keeps taking our friends. And if we're just not smart enough or strong enough to stop him, then please take it into your hands. Please, please, Lord, please stop this man. Please make him stop. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. 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 Thanks, Beck. You knew her, right? Tammy Hillam, and before she took off. She was a blonde. If she's a blonde, I'm a double D. What do you mean by that? She's a blonde in a bottle. That girl's had red hair from the day she was born. Good night. Good night. Steve up before you go? I don't know. I haven't made up my mind yet. No, we really don't have anything to hold him on. I know that. Hey, will you, uh, we walk Peg to her car? Yeah. Just call me if you need me. I will. Do you still carry that 38 in your purse? This old thing? Why well, I only carry this one, I don't know who to shoot. You want a lift? I'm just gonna walk. Are you sure? I'll be okay. Okay. See you bright and early. Good night, Peg. Good night. For you. I got tired. I fell asleep. <sighs> Come on. Get out. I'll drive. Yeah, hi, this is uh, Sheriff Clayton. Is Ryan still there? Well, maybe you can help me. Who is this? Reed, I need some information about the California woman, the one that was killed in Brigham. Yeah, something from the autopsy report. Can you pull that for me? Yeah, sure, I can hold. I'm going to take off now and get some sleep. I'm going to leave everything set up, if that's all right. Yeah, sure. Uh, Meredith. Do you need a Do you need a place to stay? Uh, my house it's it's kind of empty. I'm gonna be here tonight. No thanks. I'll just grab a motel. I have an FBI charge card. Never leave home without it. Yeah no I'm still here. 
Uh huh. Yeah, look under hair color. I need to know if she was really blonde. Thanks for the offer. No, it's a it's a strange question, but I need to know if she was a natural blonde or if she dyed her hair. Natural blonde. You're absolutely sure about that. No, no. Uh huh. Yeah. Thanks, Reed. Where are you taking me? My place. Ed. Don't Ed me, Peg. This isn't a make-out thing. I don't want you spending the night alone or any night alone until they catch this guy. No fooling around? Oh, I don't know. No. I'm saving myself for a wedding night. You better be.
Davis decided he's a night owl. I need to come in. Yeah. Come on in. Between this baby and little Mac, I don't know if he'll ever get any sleep. Is Terry home? Yeah, he's in the kitchen. He couldn't sleep either. Are you hungry? Did you get any dinner? No. Hey. <laughs> I thought you were gonna get some sleep. Oh, there he goes again. I'll be right back. What's on your mind? No, I don't think I'm ever going to forgive myself. What are you talking about? You know, Sarah had this way of getting behind my eyes. She could help me understand what I was seeing. If she was still here, I would have had this whole thing figured out a long time ago. I know I'm no substitute for Sarah, if you want to talk. Lisa Colvin. You remember her? Pretty girl. Yeah. Red hair. She died in that rock climbing accident a few years ago. You know, right after you got here. Mm-hmm. 16 years old. You know, I can't stop thinking about those shoes she was wearing. Remember? No. The shoes, they weren't made for hiking at all. You know, it never occurred to me to look for foul play. It was just an accident, right? And then Tammy Hillen. She leaves for Hollywood and just disappears. You know, all this time we've been looking for her in Los Angeles. I have this feeling that she didn't get very far from town. You know, you came to town. Ralph couldn't stop talking about you. Said you were the best worker he ever had. Return missionary, Eagle Scout, hard worker. When I needed part-time help, I didn't think twice. I just deputized you. And then when I needed you full-time, it never crossed my mind to run your prints. <laughs> I didn't even make you fill out an application. It couldn't have happened anywhere but a place like this. I finally got around to running your prints. You know, the strange thing is, you don't come up as Terry Woodruff. I found Terry, though. I found him in Snowflake, Arizona. There's an article about how he drowned in the Colorado River on a youth trip two weeks after he got home from his mission. There's another kid in that town who spent four years in prison for raping and almost killing a little girl, a little red-haired girl. The church folks talked in the paper about how he had turned his life around, how he found God in prison. And then he just disappeared. You know, the thing is, your prints match that man. I want you to tell me what you've done with Jamie's body. Joshua trees. Joshua trees. I'll put her in there. Tammy Hillen. Did you put her in there too? I don't know what's wrong with me.
I don't know why I can't stop. I... I've tried so hard to be good. You've got to help me. I... I don't want to go to hell. One thing I can't make sense of. That woman from California. Her hair wasn't red. It was red. When I finished with it. Terry, put on those cuffs. They don't forgive you. Not ever. For the rest of your life, no matter how good you are, everybody knows. I had no choice. I had to become somebody else. Terry, take your hands off that weapon and put on those handcuffs. This whole thing's your fault. You put a badge on me and a gun in my hand. You were supposed to protect this town from people like me. You never even checked my background. What were you thinking? You brought the wolf right into the center of the flock. Terry, take your hands off that gun. Terry? April, stay back. Bishop, what have you done? Terry, please. Terry, what's going on? You're so naive. You think you can just close your eyes and the world's gonna pass you by. You think you can just get down on your knees at night and say your prayers and God is gonna protect you from people like me. <laughs> well, guess what, Sheriff? Jamie was praying pretty hard at the end. And come to think of it, so are the others. Isn't that something? God isn't gonna stop me. For all the praying that goes on around here, you'd think God would care a little bit more about this town. What is he talking about? Terry, take your hands off that gun. You might as well have killed those girls yourself. You're responsible. You've got blood on your hands. Bishop, no! Terry. Please. When his parents find out what you've done, they're gonna spit on your grave. Put the weapon down. What are you doing? April, take the baby out. <laughs> take him out. <laughs> what do you think, Wes? When I raise this gun, am I gonna point it at my head or yours? Tell him I'm sorry, Wes. When you see those girls, you tell them I'm sorry.
Hello. We're wrapping things up. I just wanted to come in and say goodbye. We found out about the California woman. Turns out she was born and raised in Snowflake, Arizona. We figure he must have pulled her over for a speeding ticket. Something like that. Maybe she recognized him. The meeting's starting. Are you going in? I was supposed to protect them. I was supposed to take care of them. Nobody blames you. You're a good man, Wes. You really are. O oh God, the Eternal Father, we ask Thee in the name of Thy Son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this bread to the souls of all those who partake of it, that they may eat in remembrance of the body of Thy Son, and witness unto Thee, O oh God, the Eternal Father, that they are willing to take upon them the name of Thy Son, and always remember Him and keep His commandments which He has given them, that they may always have His Spirit to be with them. Amen. Amen. Amen.